Hello folks, in this part of S3 video series, we are going to see that how can you track what is happening inside your S3 bucket. We will see that how you can change the properties of your bucket to track what is happening on the bucket level, also what is happening at the object level. So AWS provides two level of logging, one is at server level, another is at object level and activity on the object level. So let's see it one by one. So if you want to see that how many requests are being made to your bucket, who is making it, how frequently they are making it and all the details about that particular access, then you have to enable server access logging. You go to properties, you go to server access logging and you have to enable logging. As soon as you enable logging, it will ask you what is your target bucket. Target bucket means where do you want to keep the logs which you are collecting after this logging. So you can choose any bucket which you have already created for storing your log files. So I'm going to choose this bucket itself. And then you don't want your log files to be spread everywhere in the bucket. So what you can do is you can create a folder. We also call it prefix so that all your log files get generated under that particular folder. So I can give here something like log. If I just give here log, all the files that will be created, they will be prefixed as log. Now if I give slash here, what it will do is it will create a folder called log and within that log folder all the files which are generated as logs will be kept under that folder. Now we can save it. We have to keep in mind that there is one other thing required to be done. If you are storing your log files into a particular bucket then on that bucket you need to grant S3 log deliver group access to that particular bucket. Remember when you created bucket there was an option to grant permission to S3 log delivery group to access that particular bucket. So you have to go and change that property. So once it is saved, go to permission, go to S3 log delivery group and give the permission to write objects here, which is already given. So I don't have to do anything here. If it is not done, then click on the log delivery and just click on the write objects. Now it will start creating log files and it will start saving it in the same bucket as well. Having said that, the logs which are generated like this, they are not very reliable. First of all, it takes some time to start generating those logs. It may take even up to an hour. Second thing, some of the requests may be missed out from your log. So it doesn't guarantee you that it will write each and every activity that is happening on the server. This model of logging is called best effort delivery. Also when you are changing the logging or suppose you are changing the target bucket, these setting changes also takes some time. So the bottom line is that it's a best effort delivery. It can just give you an idea that who all are accessing your bucket and what is the pattern of that. But you cannot just go and, and check out minute details about the access. Now this was about server access logging. That means who and all and when they are accessing the bucket. We also had object level logging. So you can see this property. So if you want to monitor that which file or which object is getting accessed and by what and what are the APIs which are accessing that your file then you can go and enable object level logging as well. This part is actually done by your CloudTrail. CloudTrail is another web service in AWS which is there for monitoring API activities on your services. So you need to first create a CloudTrail and then you have to assign that CloudTrail here. Right now we have not created any cloud trail so it's not appearing here we'll see this part when we go and cover cloud trail web service now when you even assign the cloud trail you have to tell what kind of events it is going to log is it only read type of event or even write type of event so right now i'm going to cancel this another way of seeing that what is happening actually inside bucket you have got events notification so you can see here under advanced setting you can see events and here you can add notification. So that means if you want to see that what is happening inside the bucket and you want to get notified through something like mail etc. Then you have to go and enable and add notification here. So just click on the add notification. You can give it a name my notifications or we can call it my S3 notifications. You can specify that on what events you are going to get notified. So suppose I want that every time somebody deletes my object, I want to get notified. So I can go here for delete, object delete 
and then I don't want to apply this on whole bucket. So suppose you want to get notified only when a particular folder is getting affected. Some document in that particular folder is getting deleted then only you want to get the notification. So suppose the folder is design document. So as we have already mentioned that folders are also called as prefix here. Only difference is we have to put here slash. Now that is optional only. If you want to track for any object deletion inside the bucket, you don't have to give prefix. Similarly, suppose you want that only the dot file deletion concerns you, then you can give something like star dot doc. Now, who will it send a mail to? So there are various destinations where this particular information can be sent that something has been deleted from this particular folder and with this particular suffix. So you can use your SNS topic which is basically simple notification services topic which is nothing but an access point where you can specify multiple email IDs. So in that case whatever is included in that particular topic, whatever emails are listed in that particular topic, an email will be sent to all of those. So this is the simplest approach, SNS topic and if you have created some SNS already, you can select that. So basically my SNS is a SNS topic that I have created earlier and it includes one or more than one email IDs. So basically this notification event will be published to that SNS topic and whoever has subscribed to that particular topic, they will get an email in their mailbox informing them that a particular object has been deleted in this particular case. However, you can select whatever events you want from here. So next thing is you just need to save it. So here we have seen now how you can track what is happening inside your bucket by things like server access logging, object level logging as well as event notification. So that's all in this video. In the next video we will talk about other properties of S3.